Hello, it's me, Sean. I am Philosopher. I'm going to do a video review on the YouTube channel, um, School of Life. They post videos, uh, and they include philosophy videos. Uh, this video was a six-minute video on Plato, and you really, yeah, you can't cover Plato in six minutes. I don't know what they were trying to do, but it's got, you know, several hundred thousand views on that channel, so they're selling something, and people are buying it. Uh, just... Uh, whatever. I'm going to have keep my hoodie on. And that helps me be Obi-Wan, Kenobi type wise. Got lost here. Oh no. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, School of Life. I cut out a whole bunch of content on this. I think I reduced it by half. I uh, pulled out stuff that was just totally wrong or total crap or I don't know what it was. Um, kind of feel-good spin stuff, but I'm not sure if they actually read any of Plato's work. And I don't know where they got a lot of their information. So we're going to go into this. And we're going to look. Uh, the video leads into uh, talking about Athens and some kind of history stuff. Plato was born to a rich family. Uh, I don't know, irrelevant crap to philosophy. I mean, was that background information? Nobody cares. Well, Somebody cares. They got a lot of YouTube pages, uh, channel views. So, let me see. Here comes Plato, according to School of Life. I'm going to check that out, and then I'm going to uh, pick it apart. I'm going to do some peer review. Uh, YouTube doesn't have peer review, and it really needs some, so let's do that. Greatest philosopher, Plato, Diononia. Mm. Or fulfillment. Plato is often confused with Socrates. No, he's not. Socrates was an older friend. That's not true. Plato a lot, but didn't write any books. Plato wrote lots of them. Sure. First big idea: think more. Mm. We rarely give ourselves time to think carefully and logically about our lives and how to lead them. Sometimes we just go along with what the Greeks called doxa, doxa. popular opinions. Plato's answer is: know yourself. No, it's not. Subjecting your ideas to examination rather than acting on impulse. If you strengthen your self-knowledge, you don't get so pulled around by feelings. Plato mm. compared the role of our feelings to being dragged dangerously along by a group of wild horses. Oh, come on In now. honor of his mentor and friend Socrates, this kind of examination is called a Socratic <laughs> discussion. No, it's not. No. With yourself That's a Socratic method is different. Persons. Second big idea. Let your love I don't even know what that changes. means right there. Plato says, true love is admiration, mm. of beauty. Everyone pretty much this loves beautiful things. This doesn't sound right at all, Plato was right the here. to ask, why do we like them? He found a fascinating reason. Yeah. Beautiful objects are whispering important truths to us He's about kinda, good life. This is a lot different. Objects, therefore, have a really important function. They help to educate our souls. Really? Ugliness is mm. a serious matter too. It parades dangerous and damaged characteristics in front of us. It makes it harder to be wise, kind, and calm. I don't know if he cared about being kind. Therapeutic. It's the duty of poets and painters, and nowadays novelists, TV uh, He didn't like poets and painters and novelists. Good lives. So I don't know why they would help us do anything. Mm. Spent a lot of yeah. Thinking how the government and society Here's where they actually review something. He was the world's first utopian thinker. I'm not sure if he was the first. He was inspired kind of wrote it down. Great rival, Sparta. His book, The Republic. Plato identifies a number of changes that should be made. Mm. Athenian society was very focused on the rich, like the loose aristocrats. I think they're kind of sports and projecting our society onto Proton. Athenians. Plato wasn't impressed. It really he was not impressed. Because celebrities influence our outlook, ideas, and conduct. And bad heroes give glamour to the Plato was pissed at actors. Plato therefore wanted to give Athens new celebrities. I don't know if new celebrities is a good way to phrase that. He called guardians, models for everyone's good development. Guardians, they were like, more like Katniss Everdeen, I don't know, uh, divergent, kind of like divergent kids. They would be the most honored and admired people in society. Theoretically, I mean. democracy in Athens. He wasn't crazy. Yeah, he, just he wanted to end democracy because before they vote, and therefore we get very substandard rulers. He didn't like the he to replace democracy with the Senate at all. But he wanted to prevent I don't know why they got a picture of Hitler here for so long. To think rationally, that is, until they become philosophers. 
Otherwise, government would just be a kind of mob rule. Yeah, see, but that's kind of fascist. Plato was kind of hardcore with his idea about the Republic. The philosopher kings. Until kings become philosophers or philosophers kings. It's about a quote there. Probably going to go to sleep soon. Uh, what do you think about their treatments of Plato? I guess treatment's a good word because you know, it's kind of not so cool. Um, Plato wrote 30 something books. I'll look it up. Um, we can talk about some of those. We can discuss them. I'm not a huge Plato fan. I read him quite a while ago, so I have to review. The Republic's one of his most significant works. Um, but still, it's got a lot of pretty hardcore, semi-fascist type ideas. Um, I think he was more along the lines of being really pissed off at the Senate and criticizing the hell out of them. Because they killed um, Socrates for corrupting the youth. And those are some pretty crazy stories. Uh, let's talk about the Socratic method. It's also called the Olympus. Um Socrates went around and... He found people that said they knew what they were talking about. They were like, oh, justice is this. And, you know, there was, uh, I don't know. He was picking on people. So he wasn't necessarily trying to be all like, oh, teach me something cool. Even though that's how he acted. He was like, oh, I'm so ignorant and dumb. You seem like you know something. Tell me about what you know. And the guy would you know, say something like justice is being awesome and then Socrates says oh really and then he would just go on and have this guy just keep explaining himself more and more detailed until he just ran out of ways to explain himself because he really didn't know what he was talking about and Socrates was well aware that these guys didn't know what they were talking about so Socrates was you know not so much uh, a cool guy that was everybody loved a lot of people thought he was awesome, but then the reason Plato wasn't a big fan of the actors is because they made fun of Socrates, uh, the, the hypocrites, or Hippocrates, Hippocrates, anyway, Greek actors, the com comedians and uh, tragedians and putting on plays, they would make fun of Socrates and philosophers, and Plato, uh, he didn't like that, he had to bug up his ass about actors. So the idea that Socrates would be like, we look up to artists and and actors and stuff is not so accurate. What else was there? Um, I don't even know what they were talking about, that love is admiration thing. The Greek had a whole, ancient Greeks had a whole different idea about what love was and how you went about being uh, loving. And sexy time was a special time. You can look into that if you want to. It's not really relevant to philosophy so much. Um, if you saw the movie Troy, old Brad Pitt uh, playing Achilles, had a little tent time with his friends. That was kind of some Greek stuff that they say happened. I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, but certainly, uh, Socrates didn't like emotion. He criticized... Uh, people for being emotional um, and I think it was Fido or the Apology one of the two where Socrates was being uh, put to death the men were being all emotional and he accused them of being women apparently the Greeks thought that women were uh, really emotional and irrational beings so Plato makes that comparison um, not really sexist so much uh, by our it's just it's not fair to uh, apply a feminist perspective on ancient Greece because they had Spartans sticking spears in their guts all the time and manly men were doing manly things with spears and chariots and women were, eh, I don't know, I can't speculate to what the hell was going on because I wasn't there. But they didn't talk very nice about their women so we know that. What else was there? Um... Well, it seems like School of Life is uh, selling a rose-colored perspective. They're really liberal with their uh, treatment of Plato and kind of leaving out a whole lot of stuff. They didn't even mention the allegory of the cave, which we'll talk about at some point, I'm sure. Um, what else is Plato awesome for? He... 
talked about the gods and whether they were just or unjust. Um, Plato worried a lot about uh, what was good, and Socrates was Plato's mouthpiece. He wrote about what Socrates did, and so um, no, Socrates and Plato, they didn't get confused a lot, and they're not commonly confused with each other. It's just not quite sure if Socrates existed or not. I think he did, and a lot of people think he did, but some people don't. Um, read some things here and there. Socrates uh, fought in the army, carried a spear. Probably, I like to imagine him as a, a stocky badass that could kill people like Bruce Willis all over the battlefield and then go talk shit in the market and make people look stupid. So Socrates was, um, he was kind of mean. He liked to drink. He fought in the army, killed men with spears, apparently. Uh, apparently he would go, I, I read that he would go and stand under a tree and think about stuff. So, uh, kind of just standing off by himself, staring into space broody. Or I'm Socrates and I'm going to go figure out stuff. So yeah, the Socratic method or Socratic questioning. Um, this video, you can look at the original. It's a, it makes it out to be a fun fun time. Everybody get together and learn stuff. When it really was not the case. So uh, yeah, Plato. We can get into Plato more if anybody's interested. Uh, if you want me to do, do more... Um, in-depth lessons on Plato, then, yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm going to be all YouTube channel dude. Um, if you want me to do more Plato, hit like and subscribe and hit me in the comments and do some shit like that. Uh, I don't have ad revenue, so whatever you want to do, do it. I'm going to do something, and if you don't want it to be Plato, then it's going to be something else. Get on it. Um, Greek philosophy. Oh yeah, and Plato was not the first big philosopher. There was all kinds of ancient philosophers who just didn't found a school and write all their shit down in books. So we got to guess. There's a who are some of them ancient dudes that are before Plato? Zeno, Zeno, it was Zeno's paradox? Well, um, and uh, I get confused with uh, some fiction that I read, some Terry Pratchett. Something to do with turtles. He made uh, he made fun of philosophers, so I get that kind of bound up in my head sometimes. Um, who was it? Beth, no, not Pythagoras. I don't think so. I know Zeno. Gorgias. Gorgias was um, a sophist, and Plato hated sophists. Plato hates sophists like I hate postmodernists. I mean, pfft. sophists were rhetoricians. They were people that would argue both sides of an argument as if they believed it. So you didn't know what the hell they were thinking. And they were really good at arguing. So, you know, you'd say that Jesus was cool. Now, that's modern day context. You say that Jesus was cool and you believe him and he's the savior. And then just, someone would come along and he'd be like, no. And he would argue that Jesus didn't exist and drive you crazy. And then when you walked away all mad, somebody would be like, I'm an atheist too. And he would turn around and be like, Jesus is the best. And, you know, that's what Gorgias would do. He, Gorgias. He would just take both sides of both arguments just to be a troll. Like an ancient Greek troll. He was... Uh, I don't like him. Because it just messes with people's heads. They have no idea what you really believe. And if you argue really well, then they don't even know what the hell's right. They're like, which one of you is right? Because... You both sound good. So yeah, the sophist and sophistry. Not cool. Um, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm going to go to bed, get some sleep. Um, hit me up with some ideas about philosophy and stuff to do.